high as well as we're in Arizona at the big city shoot. Uh, this guy's about to fire. Check out, and almost there. We are in an RV in the Sonora Desert in Arizona. We're headed to a place called Big Sandy, which is host to uh, the Big Sandy Shoot Off, which is an annual event where people with guns get together and shoot their guns, except their guns happen to be anti-aircraft guns, heavy artillery, those kind of RoboCop rifles that'll explode a Ford Pinto on one shot. Wah. So, that was comfy. Um, we are parked right next to the gun line. Right now the guys are out there setting up uh, the targets. They're just like steel barrels. And then um, there's gonna be model airplanes flying around for people to shoot. And then they have these things called reactive targets, which are basically just explosives that you shoot and they blow up. So, fun stuff. How long did it take you to find this place? I got into my Jeep and literally covered the whole state of Arizona. It took me five years. Wow. I saw a lot of really weird things, man. <laughs> hey there. Hi. Everybody's setting up, getting their sunshades up, setting up their guns, setting up their tables. Carrying their ammo up, and you'll find that they're all be friendly. How's everyone today? Excellent. Great. Let's start shooting. This is not a militia. Most of them are professional people. Yeah. And. Uh, but what you mean, like, like kind of like doctors? Doctors and, yeah. and attorneys, and yes. these people are are real dedicated collectors and shooters. Yeah. In order to own one of these guns, is such a pain in the hind end. You got to really want to do this. Here's an anti-tank round that went through. Yeah, that's pretty good size. Yeah. Pretty sharp. Mm -hmm. sure. This is hard steel. Yeah, this is very thick. Very hard. <laughs> that is a that is a just a flesh wound. bullet hole yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put Bob up here. We're blowing Bob up. His ashes. You Bob was an icon within the firearms community. I was in charge of taking care of him uh, during his passing and all his last ten years. He is one who pushed us to form this range. And Bob's wish was to be blown up at the shoot. Believe it or not. Yeah, no, well, yeah. we're gonna blow the crap out of him. That's what he wanted, you know. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a unique way. It's a fitting tribute. Yeah, we like. we blow you up, man. If well, you're yes. good, we'll give you a few more. Oh. A lot of really old-looking stuff. Gatling guns. It's like water-cooled deals that would like just mow down uh, infantrymen in World War One. It's an exciting uh, array of death dealers. Could murder a lot of people. Browning 1919, just with the A6 buttstock. It's probably my favorite, most reliable weapon. Rate of fire is slow, and uh, versus you know the anti-aircraft guns at 12, 1300 rounds a minute. Still fun though. So that basically, it's a three-man operation. One guy's shooting and one guy's loading. And feeding that. Yeah. And it, you have two barrels on the other end. Five barrels. Five barrels. So it's shooting. Yeah. Yeah, so it rotates. All right. So we're about getting ready for the uh, the shooters meeting to start, then everybody's going to start firing their guns for, uh, I guess, five hours straight. So far, everybody's super friendly. Everybody's really psyched to explain their guns. Uh, kind of a slight male skew to the crowd. I think I've seen about four women. But, uh, but everybody's friendly. This is their weekend. This is their time to come out here and expend all their energy through the firing of high-caliber bullets at model airplanes. Good, good, clean fun. Good morning, good morning. All right, the schedule today. We're going to open up the line as soon as possible when we get done here. The targets are set. Then at 1 o'clock, we're going to go ahead and uh, start it up again. That's when we blow Bob up. We're putting him in the dinosaur. We're also flying him in an airplane so he can watch over us. There's a plaque inside, and of course, when he passed away. Now, let's go shooting. Sixty seconds. Sixty seconds. She 
Jesus. <laughs> there's all these explosions. There's reactive targets out there, which are basically literally just sticks of dynamite stuck on a post in the ground. And so sometimes you'll see pops where those go off, but there's other ones where it's just it's just the caliber of the bullet hitting the hill is making like a firework level explosion. I don't know how anybody can tell what they've hit. It's just like constant explosions and dust being kicked up. Fires from the open bolt. Okay. Okay. Meg in. Yeah. You ready to go? All right, that's that's it. This is a uh, Thompson. Yeah. Name one Thompson submachine gun. 45 cal. Uh, U.S. Army's favorite. Al Capone's favorite. Eat lead coppers. Ah. Wow. Isn't that good? That's great. Beautiful. There's the last. I don't know how anybody ever did that. Oh, Be yeah, up in your yeah. face. It's a, a Finnish gun they used in the Winter War against the, the Soviet Army. Punch holes in tanks. It's probably gonna punch a hole through my uh, shoulder blade. This is a Haas. Get comfortable. Right. It's going to go on your shoulder and your cheek is right there. Right there? Okay. Okay. Squeeze it hard at the bottom. Leave it squeezed at the bottom. Now pull the trigger. Fire in the hole. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Woo! Yeah. That, that was, uh, that felt good. There we go, that's just what um, busted the hole somewhere way off target from where I was. Let's see if I've got, I, like it literally blew my fucking earplug out from that side. That was insane. Most people that have machine guns take them out to a cinder pit or a gravel pit and shoot them. But when you put them into a venue like this, it really shows you what these guns are capable of, which is pretty phenomenal. I've known Bob since 1978, 77. Yeah. I grew up with him. He was my second dad. He taught me all about automatic weapons and firearms in general, actually. Never asked for anything. So he had quite the uh, honor code, you know? This is uh, not, not quite the final rest in place, but the, uh, um, the delivery system. Yeah, it's the delivery system. That's what we're doing. So. Uh, Mike has prepared Bob in this bag, and we will literally blow him up. It's his wishes, and this is what he wanted done. You know, he wanted to be spread on this range. So everybody say goodbye to Bob. Bye, Bob. Bob. <laughs> so I think people are being a little bit coy with exactly what's in there. Because when, uh, when we asked for a breakdown of all the different component explosives, um, the list they gave us is a little shorter than the list they were talking about amongst themselves. Uh, a couple guys have openly mentioned the fact that this is more or less a dirty bomb uh, in the shape of a paper mache dinosaur filled with human ashes. So we're about to nuke Arizona right now with, uh, with their old friend. <coughs> Just cough. <laughs> cough. <laughs> no hernia. <laughs> Lock and load, Dave. Shit, here it comes. We're about to blow up their friend Bob in a dinosaur. Kind of interesting about this is this is um, sort of like an abstract thing like there's no obvious political bent to it it's not pushing law enforcement NRA isn't here it's just like pure firepower it's just people who are like into guns for being into guns Wolverine whoa yeah that's gonna make it hard to jack off tonight <laughs> Thank you.
Other places don't have facilities or the ability to do anything near this. So everything is compared to this range. What this represents is the freedom to be able to shoot, to do what you want. But really, it's the camaraderie of all my fellow shooters. We help each other. It's just a really good group of people. And uh, I frankly, I enjoy being around them. Shooter, stand by. Threat. He did really, really well. Oh, thank you. Well, I thought wow. you did. You're always welcome to come out here and uh, do that, you know. Thanks, yeah. We'll take you and you'll be our like orphan child or something. <laughs> you know? We're setting up for the night shoot tonight. We'll just put glow sticks on them. It's my job to make sure I can get as much flying time as I can. Uh, it's just a matter of seeing if I can get a few passes in before someone hits it. So uh, sun, sun's finally set. It's getting towards a um, full dark, which is the uh, official start time for the night shoot. In like a couple minutes from now, this thing's just going to be totally lit up with tracer fire and explosions and uh, little glow stick planes flying around and everybody trying to shoot them down. And it's described as like the most insane fireworks display you've ever seen, but like on the ground, 20 yards away from you. Kind of like use the shit out of like a laser show or whatever you'd be doing. I, I assume they see a lot of laser shows here. Over at the end of the Big Sandy, we're going to shoot some uh, Israeli tracers out of an old uh, Nazi MP40. Here it comes in. It's a very definite connection between firearms and people and growing up and the Constitution and the United States and the freedom of this country. This is about the, the highest freedom you can do, I think. I mean, this is like the most complete sensory overload I think I've ever experienced. It reeks of sulfur. The sound of the gunfire is like it physically impacts your chest. You can feel the concussions. It's like completely short circuiting your brain. Can't wait for the next plane to go up. It's insane. <laughs> 